So a day in the life of an OBGYN. It's 5.30. Uh, this is when the day starts before anybody else gets up. All right, let's go get this day. First thing we gotta do is uh, get five minutes of exercise, get the blood flowing. Oh, so I've got a series of rituals or habits that help me set my intention for the day and get the most out every day. Here we go. So you've probably heard the adage, happy wife, happy life. Daily love note. So we'll just add this one to the collection here. Walking to the kitchen here. Oh, it's got a little Hi, puppy. How are you doing? Hey. Looks like the triplets had a sleepover last night on the couch. I'm not supposed to do that on a weekday. All right, just gotta start the morning right here. Do you ever feel tired, joint pains, headache? Well, it's probably because you're dehydrated and you're most dehydrated first thing in the morning. Try to drink three or four liters of water a day. Citrate helps gut absorption of essential minerals. Um, gonna get some 369 blend of omega acids. Lemon in there as well. I'm gonna grab a couple of vitamin D and some magnesium. And with that, we're off to work. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, that's my little one. So we're off bright and early before the crack of dawn. The key is to be efficient in the OR. Um, we wanna serve as many patients as we can in the amount of time we can. OR is assigned block time, which means it's time for you to put your surgeries on and nobody else can put their surgeries at that time, but you have to put surgeries on during those blocks or um, you know they may re reallocate that. So the day in the life of an OBGYN, um, there's OB and there's GYN. Um, I don't practice obstetrics, I'm a subspecialist for urogynecology, which is a surgical subspecialty of uh, gynecology that basically deals with prolapse, incontinence, uh, pelvic pain. But I try to do surgery every single morning um, to just get the most efficient use of my day. Wow, this light seems to be broken here. The drive to my main hospital from my house is about 10 minutes. Uh, my other hospital is about 18 minutes. So it's kind of nice thing about getting up early is you don't have to deal with traffic because you're getting there before everybody else. So I would call myself an accidental morning person. I don't uh, jump out of bed, you know, excited to you know, get the day, but um, as it turns out, it actually is the most efficient use of your day and your time, and we're here. All right, so it is 6.45, we are on time. I'm gonna go pre-op the patient, and then we'll see you in the back. Good morning. All right, so every morning we gotta scrub in and get ready for the case. And here we go. So you asked me to explain what is this robot thing? Well, traditionally we have open surgery. So we have a scalpel and instruments. We use this to make an incision on the abdominal wall. Um, and we can get our hands inside the actual abdominal cavity and do whatever surgery that we need to do. The problem is it has a big scar that's not cosmetically appealing and the recovery is much longer, three to four times as long. So then we came up with an idea of doing laparoscopic surgery. So we create these long instruments that go through little 
keyhole incisions on the abdominal wall. And instead of having our hands inside the patient, we do the surgery with these little tiny instruments. Okay. So then we have robotic surgery and robotic surgery. We basically take these laparoscopic instruments and we uh, attach them to the robot and we set it a console and our movements that we make over here are translated to the robot over here, like such. All right, so after we finish up doing a case, sometimes two cases in the OR, we'll head over to clinic. And then one of the super cool things is, in many cases, I'm, I'm able to, you know, offer the patient a minimally invasive solution or a surgery with small incisions uh, with the robot that, you know, frankly, some of their uh, other uh, medical opinions told them they, they couldn't have that for one reason or another. Maybe they told them their fibroids were too big or they had too much abdominal surgery or they had maybe too many C-sections and one of the benefits of having served so many patients over so many years um, and having done you know, over 3,000 surgeries is we've got a pretty good system for being able to perform uh, the surgery in a minimally invasive way with the robot as opposed to having to do an open incision. A standard clinic day, if I'm doing a full day, uh, is going to last somewhere Start around 8.30, take our last patient in at about 3.30, you know, finish charting sometime around maybe 5.30. And on some days, I get to finish up early. And if I get early enough, I get to pick up the kids from school, which is always a highlight. I've got about, oh, 10 minutes until we have our morning meeting where we will kind of go over the agenda for the day. Then it's basically a all out sprint for the next uh, eight hours. As any doctor will tell you, uh, charting is kind of the bane of their professional existence. Sometimes it can take hours after clinic and you know, while you are there in the office, you wanna be there for your patient. Um, you don't wanna sit there and you know, type and not pay any attention. You wanna be present. Um, it's hard to be empathetic when you're, you know, staring down a computer screen. And I think, well, I know that, you know, patients appreciate that. Um, and some of the critical elements of the uh, interview have to be chronicled in the moment. But, um, you know, it is, oh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to have to go back and input all that data later. Um, I know they're working on systems of uh, artificial intelligence where you have an Alexa that you just put right between you and the patient and you talk and the patient responds and the, the, the robot brain uh, through deep thought and machine learning uh, creates the entire note. So it's not just robots in the OR, there are gonna be robots everywhere that are gonna be helpful in medicine and every other industry. So this is our office building Quite beautiful. All right, guys, ready for clinic. Let's do this. All right, so this is our lovely office uh, where we get things done. We provide world-class patient care. All right. Hi, Dr. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Here's my team. Okay, the uh, the, the world's best team. Are we gonna have a good day today? We're gonna have a great day. Awesome. All right, come on down. These are all the exam rooms. This is uh, where we uh, identify uh, what needs to be uh, fixed, helped, how we can best help patients. And then uh, sometimes it's just an office visit. Sometimes that means going to the operating room to get a permanent resolution. Come on over. Dolores. Good morning. Say hi. Good morning. We're gonna have a good day today. Always. Yes, sure. Only, uh, <laughs> only 60 patients on the schedule. <laughs> All right. But we got you, doctor. Oh, I appreciate it. Let's make it a great day.
All right, and now for every physician's uh, least favorite part of uh, clinical work is charting. So we're going to sit here and uh, document. We have our uh, handy dictaphone here. This is a present spread hours of Russia, and that is a psycho couple of actually All right, let's see what we got. Oh, geez, that, that's no good. Let me see. Oh, okay. Yeah, much better. Alright, now it's time to take Luna for a walk. 